I'm John Wilder. I'm the historian of Aleppo Shrine. Uh, today I'm bringing you a set of items which have become very popular with collectors uh, both within and without the fraternity. These were a set of uh, cartoon images pr produced by Aleppo Shrine and there were a couple other temples that reused the images over the years. Uh, these were main, uh, mainly pr <coughs> produced between uh, 1902 and 1929. Uh, there was a potentate who recreated them as a fundraising effort in 1991 and took one of the originals and uh, recreated it. As you can see with some of them, they actually inserted the face of the potentate and the recorder at the time. So the one in 1991 actually uh, took one of the original images and inserted his face in it. Uh, so as I mentioned, these have become rather uh, collectible. This is one of the earliest ones uh, from 1911. These ones are rather uh, from later from the 1920s, so you'll see these ones more often. Uh, often they were saved and framed, so a lot of people don't realize, since they find them in frames, that they are actually meeting notices. These were sent rolled up in mailing tubes, and I actually have one in our museum in Aleppo in the original mailing tube, and this was your, your notice of upcoming meetings and events. So on the back of this one it says, uh, Illustrious noble attend, uh, caravan of Aleppo will halt at Mechanics Hall, Huntington Avenue, Boston, Monday, May 29th, 1911 at 6 o'clock. So they would have a traditional banquet, the traditional shows and entertainment, along with the initiation of new candidates. So that's an earlier one. And then this is one of the more well-known known ones which was, I believe this was the one that was reproduced. This is from 1923. And the, bag, the back is uh, their annual outing, which they uh, titled their stag party because uh, they, this one the, was only for nobles. Not that anything uh, untoward went, uh, went on there, but uh, <laughs> this, they would usually take a, a, a long weekend trip to, uh, this one was to Hampton Beach some of the other ones were to other uh, local attractions and areas, and there would be sports and parades and, and different, different events that went on. <coughs> now, uh, with these, we, uh, <coughs> what they actually depict is a complete over-exaggeration of what we would call the Hot Sands Initiation. Now, what, is, uh, what needs to be understood is when the shrine was formed up until the year 2000, in order to join, you had to either be a 32nd degree Scottish Rite Mason or a Knight Templar in the York Rite uh, Commandery. So the whole point of the shrine was they took these serious Masons who had put in their time and through an initiation that was a lesson in humility, gave them the opportunity to have a place to relax and have fun and enjoy fellowship. That's why for many years you would have heard the shrine referred to as the playground of Masons. Now like many appended bodies, it was not considered a Masonic organization for many years, which is why it's not the playground of Freemasonry, but rather the playground of Masons. Now obviously in, uh, in these, uh, we didn't stretch candidates out on an anthill or make them tightrope across barbed wire you know, drag them by a camel or put them in a flaming wheel. Um, there's uh, some great ones, you know, bo boiled alive, uh, a bed of spikes. But they would have often homemade pranks which were born from the, uh, the vaudeville stage. Companies like uh, DeMolin uh, made a lot of these props. They have a great museum out in the Midwest who uh, preserved a lot of this history. But these would go out as Sort of a uh, sort of a way to scare the candidate. It's very similar to in Blue Lodge. If you've ever heard someone talk about riding the goat, oh yes, well you know I I hope we remember to feed the goat tonight. You know, so just sort of riling up the candidate a little bit. Of course, that's been misunderstood over the years. Other notices, not these posters, uh, did have similar images. There's a great one that was used. Uh, about six times over Aleppo's early history of two guards dragging the candidate up the, uh, up the stairs as he tried to escape. You'll see the porcelain figurine and the plate with the image of the, 
the uh, newly fezzed noble with his arm bandaged and a black eye and it says, I joined. Uh, so you see a lot of that. Uh, it was always a playful nature, of course, and uh, the initiation was, uh, though it had some pranks, was obviously never as, uh, as intense as these. And there were other large size poster notices. Um, they were meant to be hung up in, uh, in the, usually the dining halls of the lodges, passed out to the, the brothers. Um, I wouldn't think that they would hang them in their place of business, per se, but uh, there were, some of these notices were even two, three times the size of these, not all with the cartoon images, but the various information. But just because of the colorfulness and the uh, fantasy of these, they've just become very popular. We get contacted quite a bit about these people asking, you know, what, what they were, how much they sell for, and as I mentioned, often because people save them and so many exist, they are framed that people don't realize what they are because they can't see the back. These were meeting notices, they went out to every member, and since at the time Aleppo had about 5,000 members, there were many produced and there are quite a few that have survived, but uh, people love them to this day and they, uh, they do collect them. So if you like what you've seen uh, in our videos, be sure to like our video, uh, subscribe to our, face, our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook. Thank you.